I'm about to tell you how replacing this one little part can save you around two thousand dollars. All right, y'all. This is my baby here. One of my babies. There's my other baby. This is the convertible. Got all of the lights. You know, blacked out. Um, we got these rims off of like a, a 2015 to 18 model. So if you guys are wondering if the newer model Mustang rims will fit, they will. Because that's the same thing I did to this one. All right, guys. Here's my project I'm working on. This is my wife's Mustang, really. There's mine. For some reason, when I put it in reverse, you hear it engage. When I give it gas, I'll show the ground so you can see. That's the rev limiter. It won't move. If I put it in drive, same thing. If I put it in three, Oh, it feel that? It engaged. Two, engaged. One, engaged. You know what? Let's try overdrive. Let's turn the overdrive off. All right. All right. When we got it in reverse and drive or overdrive, we got no movement. We get a little rocking back and forth. First, second, and third, we're getting full power. About two weeks ago, I went through, me and my buddy, we pulled this transmission. I seen a lot of people say the overdrive sprag could be broke. I seen a guy say the transmission pump could be broke. I uh, even replaced the torque converter because most people say the torque converter just goes bad. The, the shavings build up. The fluid was really bad. It was um, it was full of metal. It looked almost like burnt oil. So we replaced the torque converter because everything I, um, everything it seemed to me like maybe the torque converter was bad, and it was eating itself up, and the fluid uh, got full of metal. Maybe stopped up the filter and wasn't letting enough fluid pass through. So that was what I was thinking was going on with it. So what we did, we pulled it, we replaced the torque converter, we added new fluid. And so b before we, we got no movement really, it, even in the first and second, it, we, we, we didn't get movement. So when we put it back together, we actually drove, I drove to the stop sign and then before I made it, a quarter mile down the road it lost power um, we pushed it back by hand and then I was able to get it in first and drive it home in first and second I think maybe the the filter was clogged because I wasn't getting first or second before so when I tore it down and put it back together it did help the problem but I'm still not getting drive in reverse I see a lot of people's having the same problem and it, it really kind of made me a little mad, not for myself really, but I see a lot of people in forums asking questions like, you guys, I'm having the same problem. What do you think it could be? What was wrong with it? And the guy's like, the transmission needs to be rebuilt. They know the transmission needs to be rebuilt. I know the transmission needs to be rebuilt, but what's wrong inside of the transmission that needs to be rebuilt? Because everybody said it's the transmission, it's the overdrive spray. Had a lot of people, even a good trusted mechanic buddy that that's all he does is build transmissions. He told me it was an overdrive spray. So I pulled it. I'm like, you don't have to pull the whole transmission apart, just the front uh, pump off. And I pulled the spray. <laughs> Right, this is our transmission puller. 
the 50 bucks used on Amazon. I'll leave a link to the to this in there. So basically how this works. We're gonna tighten this down on the hood back here. Behind the grooves on the flat smooth part. Take our 10 millimeter wrench, tighten it down. So it's snug, you don't want to over tighten it. And then as you tighten this down, it'll push in on this and we'll pull the whole pump out. So I'm gonna go through and show you how that's gonna work right now. Alright, now that we got that set up, I'm about to show you how easy it is to get it off when you use this tool. There it is, you hit a big pot. It means the O-ring's loose. Alright. Put my pump on out. Oh yeah, we can already see that's break. Pull this over drive. The band's too tight around the overdrive to get it out. So we're gonna loosen this one bolt on the side. It's a three quarters. As I loosen that, you can see we loosen the band. You can see there's a gap now in the band. Let's try to get it out. I might have to take it all the way out. Yeah, I'm have to take it all the way out. Nope. Well, it came all the way out of here. All right. Set that to the side. This is your overdrive clutches. This is your overdrive band. These are the clips that hold it in place. You can see one pushes on to this piston on the side and the other one is to the bolt that we just tightened. You can see they both have grooves where they just slide in and hold the band. And then when it needs to tighten, this applies pressure. And we'll probably have to pop that out to get that band back on. But for right now, I have to take the sensor off the of overdrive band right here. Alright, you can see the piston right here. That's still holding it, so we've got to get this out. If I try to hold this band in. I want you to do like you did last time and probably miss to pop it out so we can get this band out. There we go. To push that piston from the inside. Alright, now that we got that pushed out of the way, should be able to pull this overdrive all the way out now. Alright. So get this gear, this bearing set right here. Alright, there's your overdrive gear set. right now to get to the overdrive sprag we got to get this separated all right there's an o-ring right here the same kind we had to use to get that other piston off and what you're going to do is take your flathead get in there enough you can see what i'm doing there 
I ain't gonna pry it up. I used a tall Allen wrench. You can use a, a real long Phillips screwdriver, but you're gonna put a something long so you can go inside of the shaft. And uh, you're gonna hold this up on blocks or two by fours, anything to hold this up in the air. Take a long screwdriver or a, a tall Allen wrench, what I used, and tap it down. Just tap it easy, and eventually it'll come apart. Okay, you can tell this is this is how it pulled out. And right now I can't even put it back because the the spray gets so bad. All right, but just to show you, here's the problem. Look. If you're having the problem where you don't have any forward or reverse or if you floor it and it feels like the, the car is just automatically going to neutral and it just revs and then maybe you cut it off later, you, it drives normal again, this, this is the problem. <laughs> There's the overdrive bag. What's left of it? And what this is, as you can see, it sits in here. Is this sprag is a one-way clutch? It's a bearing, but it's also a one-way clutch. So it's supposed to be able to turn freely one way, and when it turns the other way, it's supposed to lock up. And what happens is, you can see here. When it starts to wear out, it falls apart. And so what happens is it doesn't hold when it's supposed to, when it's in reverse or in overdrive or drive. So when you press the gas, this just spins inside of the transmission instead of making the tire spin because this is supposed to lock up. So if you can get the transmission out and in by yourself and I'm pretty sure that you can handle um, replacing this sprag. You can say we don't really have to do too much. Um, one important thing I would say if you're going to do it is go ahead and buy the tool. I've seen a lot of people um, get the pump off different ways and it's, it's really not worth it. I would just go ahead and buy the, buy the right tool to pull it so you don't destroy the pump and end up having to replace it then you should be fine keeping the planetary gears. But if you can see any wearing or scarring in here on these gears, then I would replace the whole planetary gear set. Or any, if this is real badly damaged where it wouldn't be a good connection when you replace this, then I will go ahead and replace this. The one thing I would advise is go ahead and inspect your overdrive band just for peace of mind, I think these are only like 20 or 30 bucks. You can go ahead and replace it. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take some sandpaper and this edge, I'm just gonna round it off as much as I can. Just take the sharp edge off. Try to get some kind of bevel or chamfer on it. So it doesn't wear out that, uh, it doesn't wear out the hole in that transmission. And so hopefully we can avoid another one of the common problems.